Hello, everybody, and welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Rashpixel.fm. I'm Pete Wright, and I am here with Nikki Kinzer. Hello, Pete Wright. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Nikki, it's it's uh, now it's official, right? It's it's Friday as we record this, October sixth. We are in ADHD Awareness Month. We are. We are. We're in deep it. in it. We're in boots the on the ground. Yes. <laughs> Screaming ADHD awareness. I, yes, I'm putting it on my personal Facebook page. I'm putting it on my business page, Twitter, oh, yeah. Pinterest. It's everywhere. Oh, you're all over. I am. Uh, how's it going for you so far? It's going great. And I got to tell you, tell me. Um, the ADHD Awareness Expo, you can still sign up for that, even though it, it's past like the, the time. You can still do it afterwards. And look, I, I think they do... I think they do charge a fee to look at the video, so I'm not going to say it's free, but uh-huh. um, but do check it out because there are some wonderful, wonderful um, videos and some great experts, and it's just been great. I love it. I'm having outstanding. Fun. Mm-hmm. Well, since we're in the middle of it, uh, you know, last week you talked about the um, the events that you were doing. Yes. Uh, and, and at that point, we didn't have any of the uh, links on the website. But now we do. Do you want to do a quick review? Well, right now, coming up is the TAD Talk um, through ADA. And mine is going to be on how to set realistic goals. And that's going to be towards the end of October. So you have mm-hmm. plenty of time to, to sign up for the TAD Talks and still look at or listen to the ones that um, – were previous from from when you listen to this podcast. It's right. so hard because it's not current time, yeah. you know, of time frames get confusing. But but the TAD talks they're starting like now, right? Yeah, I mean, you, yeah. you, there's a new one every day and uh, right. and there are a lot of great resources there. Yes, yes, yes. And I have another webinar coming up um it, it, on October 13th and so sign up for that. But all of the stuff is on our website because you did a great job putting well, a little calendar there. Well, thank you. Yes, so people can check that out. Outstanding. Uh, very excited about that. And don't forget, uh, you know, to join Nikki on Facebook, Facebook Live every Friday. Oh, forgot about that. I know. Yes, look at me. there's look at so me. much. <laughs> I'm managing your calendar. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and every it. Friday, you've got a whole new kind of topic to talk about. I do. But don't ask me what the topic is today. <laughs> Check the calendar. Check yet. the calendar. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, we are we're going to be talking about something today. Uh, we haven't talked about this. I, I, it's been a while. And I think sometimes we take for granted that, um, you know, if you're joining the show, if you're new to the show, you may be new to ADHD. And so we're going to take a step back and we're going to talk about what to do, how to handle, how to approach your new diagnosis of ADHD. And we have a fantastic representative to help us do that. Before we dive in, head over to TakeControlADHD.com, get to know us a little bit better, catch up on all the scheduling events through the month of October. We're very excited about that. You can listen to this show right on the website or subscribe to our mailing list right there on the front page, and you'll get an email each time a new episode is released. You can connect with us on Twitter or Facebook at Take Control ADHD and call us 503 664 for ADD to get your voice and your thoughts on this show. We would love to hear from you. And for those of you who've already jumped over to our Patreon account, patreon.com slash the ADHD podcast and supported us there, we deeply appreciate it. We're very excited to have launched Patreon uh, and your support, your direct uh, your buck a month, your five bucks a month, they, they not only help uh, to us to grow and to do more stuff and attend more conferences and bring you more great resources, they also help those who are listening to the show. For example, our first goal, when we hit our first goal, we're going to be able to afford to uh, begin offering transcripts of every single episode. So we're, we're really shooting for something that's that's going to help others who listen to the show, uh, but but we do need your help to do it, and and so we appreciate that in advance. All right. Let's get going. Michael B. Simino is an entrepreneur, a, a sales and marketing pro. He's been supporting organizations such as Ada and Chad, our very favorites. In fact, he's here sort of representing them both today in his work helping to launch the 2017 International Conference on ADHD, which we're going to talk about much more in a bit. First, though, we want to take on this question of how to approach your new diagnosis of ADHD from a guy who has been there. Michael Simino, welcome to the ADHD podcast. Thank you so much, Nikki and Pete. Thank you for having me on today. It's a pleasure. Well, we are so happy that you're here. Uh, And as Pete said, you know, I would love to hear your story, um, kind of where you, what your journey's been with ADHD and and to give our listeners sort of a, a path 
of what to do. I've got this diagnosis. It's new. I don't know what to do with it. So uh, let me start by saying uh, a bit about my story, and then I'll, I'll tie that into uh, you know what our listeners who who recently been diagnosed uh, you know should uh, should expect. What was it like? What was the day like, Michael? That day long ago. <laughs> The sun is rising. Set the stage for us. <laughs> sure, sure. So understand, uh, you know, it, uh, ADHD can can seem different in every individual. But for me, it was something I, I've always been a, an outside the box thinker. Um, I've also been, uh, you know, very uh, energetic as a child, adolescent. So there were certainly looking back now, there were clear signs that uh, I had ADHD as a child. Uh, but I wasn't formally diagnosed uh, with it for about 30 years. So I got formally diagnosed um, at the age of 29. Uh, and it really, it was just a feeling of relief uh, because it answered, you know, it answered all those questions. It gave me a context for, uh, for what I've been, you know, researching and, and trying to figure out. Does that, uh, does that sound like something you can relate to, Pete? You just wrote my story. It was it, it was the same thing. I was a little bit older uh, when I was diagnosed, but it was uh, you know it was it was a completely out of context thing. And our listeners already know. I mean, for me, it was uh, I was in uh, uh, in uh, having a little marriage counseling early, early, early in my marriage, and uh, and and the, the uh, therapist said, uh, you know, you guys are fine, your relationship's fine, but Pete, why don't you stick around? And let's talk about your ADHD. And I just happened to get very lucky uh, with a, a, a counselor who uh, also happened to have direct experience uh, and expertise in working with adults with ADHD, or I would have been lost. Uh, but you're right. It's like suddenly the map uh, uh, that, that you've been staring at that is blank, it suddenly has contours to it. It has roads, it has rivers, it has mountains, uh, and, and it comes into focus. Sure does. Uh, and, you know, I spent years, but hours and hours, uh, you know, in therapy, uh, trying to figure out, you know, is this ADHD, is, you know, and um, I think y you really, when you hear that diagnosis, it just gives you, uh, you know, a context. And, and so uh, for our listeners, if you've recently been diagnosed, take a deep breath and realize that, you know, great things start from here. Um, and, you know, that there are organizations and there are people um, all across the country that support you. And you're not alone. There are so many, uh, you know, adults uh, with ADHD, um, you know, in America. You know, I love that you say that, that just the positive spin on it, that you're, you, you know, th this is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. And I think that a lot of times what I hear with clients is, yes, they have that relief because now things start to make sense. But then they also immediately almost go into fear. Um, so can you expand a little bit more about what you mean that, okay, there's resources, there's things you can do like, definitely. Uh, so I think, you know, when anyone, uh, is, is diagnosed with really any condition, um, nowadays, the first thing we do is we jump on the computer or on our phone, uh, you know, and, and hop on Google and we try to learn as much as we can about, uh, what this diagnosis is. So for me, I spent a lot of time trying to dissect what it is and, and how it manifests. And uh, as far as I, you know, as, as I can tell, um, you can never know too much about yourself. Uh, and I think that's really important for, for anyone with ADHD is, you know, learn about the, the condition, um, you know, but also learn about yourself. Take a, take a real good look at, you know, the strengths that you bring to the table, because uh, chances are those are going to propel you, you know, um, along in your, in your life and in your career. So some, uh, just to make a note, some resources are obviously better than others. Um, you know, I'm, I'm part of the reason why I'm on the podcast today is to talk about two organizations who are the leaders, the leading nonprofits for ADHD, uh, for awareness, education, and, and advocacy. Uh, they're at it in chat. And what are the differences between the two? You know, that's a great question. So our, our missions are very similar. Um, you know, on behalf of, of ADA, their, their mission is to serve, to power, to connect. Uh, and it's really, um, so ADA is the Attention Deficit Disorder Association, uh, but it really exists um, to support adults that are living with ADHD. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, certainly we have uh, a professional community. We have great coaches like yourself, Nikki, uh, you know, that are, that are members and, and supporters. Now, CHAD, on the other hand, tends to be more on the scientific end. Um, CHAD stands for Children and Adults with Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Uh, so they tend to be geared towards more maybe parents that don't have the diagnosis, uh, but that have children that may. 
um, and mm -hmm. they, they tend to be more educational based. And Chad will have local chapters in, in larger cities, uh, typically like Portland and, and right. And, and they have meetings where people can, t can go in once a month and connect with others. And it, do they still do that? Oh, they sure do. Uh, and that's a great point. Um, so, ch uh, Chad, another difference is that Chad is in person. Uh, so to your point, you know, all throughout the country, uh, if you just go to their website, chadd.org, uh, you can find a chapter nearby. Uh, and you can connect and meet with others like yourself or that, you know, can relate to your situation uh, and professionals that are in the community that support the organization. Um, at it is entirely mm -hmm. virtual. They tend to uh, to really focus mm -hmm. on uh, adults that, you know, that have careers and have, uh, you know, families and and lives of their own. They don't tend to be in person, but they have virtual um, support groups. So virtual online support groups that you could yes. actually join is what you're saying, right? So, okay. So that's just another way to connect, which I think is so important, especially when you're newly diagnosed, because you do feel like you're by yourself. You do feel like, okay, gosh, before having the diagnosis of ADHD, you're just thinking that it's your fault. Uh, so having that connection with other people like, oh, OK, well, this is this is the normal way for ADHD <laughs> like this. This is OK, um, can really be helpful, I would I would assume for someone that's a little bit confused. Michael, how did you get involved with these organizations? I, I'm I'm assuming that you you got involved first as a it, it you know, it's a hair club for men thing. You liked it so much. You bought the company. You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> Uh, like, I assume that you, you got involved uh, as, uh, as as somebody seeking resources first. Or, yes, or absolutely. What was that like? Uh, seeking resources, I was uh, I was actually referred to to Ada and Chad on a number of occasions, um, and you know I became a member of both organizations. And w once I got to see really wh what these organizations stand for, uh, you know, really Ada um, specifically, you know, attracted me because I am an adult. Uh, and a lot of their content is tailored that way and, and spoke to my story. Uh, and let me just say, I can't speak highly enough of both organizations of, you know, the employees and, uh, you know, and, and the members of their board. They're just the most compassionate and, you know, understanding people and understand, too, that especially from Ada's point of view, they're all volunteers. So these are people that are investing their own time right. uh, because they believe, you know, this is an important mission. I agree because the work I've done with Ada, um, they have all been wonderful and professional, and uh, you can really tell it's their passion. Absolutely. Michael, one of the things that that um, you know that I, I note about you just it, that your career is not just a, you know volunteering and sales and marketing for um, you know for these two fantastic organizations. You are are first and foremost uh, an, an entrepreneur and a career sales guy, and you've been working in international marketing for. Uh, a long time. And uh, I would love to hear you reflect a little bit on how you found you were able to to integrate this sort of new awareness of ADHD in your career path and how you how you moved your career forward as a business person. Sure. So uh, obviously career can be a challenging, uh, you know, challenging uh, decision uh, journey for for anyone. But uh, living with, you know, uh, adult ADHD can certainly make it challenging. Um, I'll say that, you know, really, uh, I was lucky enough um, growing up. I grew up in a family of entrepreneurs. My father's been in his own business for going on 40 years now. Um, so I've looked up to him, you know, all of my life. Um, you know, my mother and my sister are, are career salespeople. So I guess you would say the sales aspect is really just something that was in my DNA, um, you know, but certainly um, I, I think it's important to, to know that, that some um, some career paths are, are better for those with ADHD to let them be more creative, um, you know, think outside of the box. And I think that's really, um, you know, where I found my niche in sales and marketing. That's a really interesting, you know, perspective. And we sort of, we sort of vector on that occasionally. We don't talk about career a whole lot on, on the show, which is why I think it's such an interesting uh, question, right? You know, what is it that makes sales and marketing such an appropriate career for, um, you know, you and your ADHD. Sure. Uh, well, so I'm a people person, as you can probably tell from the couple of conversations we've had. Uh, and, you know, being at least early on in my career, being in sales, uh, being out on my feet, you know, out of the office, um, smelling the air, you know, the, the fresh air. Seeing Changes the of context every day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, it was just every yeah. day was unexpected. Uh, but you got to meet new, exciting people, um, you know, and for me, uh, you know, something that, um, 
that certainly I, I thrive on is, um, you know, is, is feedback, positive feedback. And um, so in sales, that's really, that's really been very uh, rewarding. Um, moving into more of a marketing, uh, you know, into my marketing work, uh, is really just more on um, on messaging. I think you know most uh, adults with ADHD have a different way of looking at things, and um, I think that can be very powerful. Michael, one of the questions I have for you is when you were talking about you know when people are first diagnosed, they tend to do a lot of research. You know, you go straight to Google, and um, I had that experience in a different way when my husband was first diagnosed with MS. That was exactly what we did. We went straight to Google and. It was an awful experience um, because you you see like the worst case scenario and all you see is everything that is bad and everything that could possibly happen. And so, you know, we ended up kind of shutting it all down. So I'm curious from your standpoint, I mean, that happens with ADHD too. I mean, if you were just to Google, you know, ADHD, you're going to see, you're going to have challenges with this and this is how you're going to need to do this. And when is it too much research? When is it, um, like how, how does a person who's already so overwhelmed break that down? That's a very good question. Uh, and I think, you know, um, it's important that, uh, that you learn about it, but you learn about the condition from the right resources. So if you just go on Google and you do a search, it can be overwhelming. Um, and you know, the information may be accurate or it may not be. So I think what's really important is if you're newly diagnosed and you want to learn more about, um, you know, the condition and, and really even more about how you can, you can manage it and make it work for you. Um, you know, take a look at resources like at it in chat, but go see your doctor. You know, I, I, I don't come from the professional community of uh, ADHD practitioners, but I can tell you I speak very highly of them. Uh, you know, go to your doctor and, and talk to them about it. Um, understand that there's, you know, there's uh, stigma out there and there is judgment out there, but that there are people like, you know, myself and Pete and Nikki that are, are really are, are rooting for you to get the right help. And I think it is, it does help to reach out to uh, like these online support groups that, that Ada has. I mean, reach out to other people who, who have ADHD so you don't feel alone and, and uh, it, it can make more sense that way too. So yeah, that's great. So I have one more question um, and then I'd like to, to talk a little bit about this conference. Um, how do you recommend talking to people about your ADHD. So you, you just found out you had it um, or that you have it. And, and now, you know, where do you, how do you talk to your spouse about it? How do you talk to your parents about it? How do you, any suggestions with that? Like, do you just, what did you do? Maybe you can just share your own experience. That's a very interesting question. And I think, um, I think it really depends on you. It depends on you. It depends on your style. It depends on your family, uh, your significant other, uh, how you might approach that. Um, I would say that uh, I can speak certainly to my own story. Um, you know, since I was diagnosed uh, as a child and adolescent, um, and then again, you know, at the age of 29, it took the better part of those 29 years um, to, to help my family understand where I was coming from. Um, and, and what I mean by that is if you don't have ADHD, uh, sometimes it's, it's, you don't get it. Um, so be understanding of that and um, and know that, you know, uh, you can all go to, um, you know, to some coaching lessons or um, uh, and work together as a family to get through it. Pete, I can just imagine Kira, when you came home from that appointment, Kira is probably like, Pete, what did they say? What did they say? <laughs> oh, well, you got to remember, Nikki, she was sitting right there. Right. right? And I like bet her mouth was just right like, next huh? to me. She was like, oh, in this thing. Thing. You know, my even my mother, who, of course, d you know, didn't want to believe it because, you know, she uh, of course, when you're a parent, you find out, oh, my gosh, your child has ADHD. You didn't you didn't understand. And now things make sense. But, oh, my God, there's this wave of guilt. And here I am. I mean, <laughs> I was like a 30 year old man and and uh, or as I was 35 or whenever it was. And, uh, you know, here she, here she is discovering that, um, you know, she feels like this is something that she should have known all along that, oh, she could have helped. But it was a different time when I was a kid, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and at the time when I was a kid, it was, you know, ADHD was, was like medicated in our community. There was, there were no other accommodations. It was get the kid on Ritalin and, uh, you know, and, and that's it. Like, that's what you do. 
Right, and, right. Um, and and so there was no other option. So um, there there was a lot of like, oh my gosh, head slapping. I can't believe it. Not just on my part, but on on people very close to me, like uh, who who at first were kind of in denial. You know, they were like, oh no no no, of course you don't have ADHD. But I, I mean, I totally get all the distraction and the grades and the and the uh, crazy you know behavior around you know how you sleep and your late nights and your unable inability to organize your work. I mean, I, I, all that stuff is just personality. But but of course, it's not ADHD. And and then they come to terms with it. Then they they realize, oh my gosh, you know, we're, we're now connecting dots that that we didn't even know were dots. Right, right. And it it totally makes sense. So you know, for for me, it was it, it was definitely that that kind of an awakening and having to talk to people and explain like, yes, all those things that you you saw in me, that you observed in me, that you documented in my performance reviews uh, over the years, all of that. It comes from this umbrella thing that now we have a word for. And uh, it, it took even longer to, to come to terms with the fact, I say pretty recently, to come to terms with the fact that ADHD does not mean broken. ADHD right. does not mean it's something that needs to be fixed. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's, it is, um, you know, it's, it, it's unique, it's special, it's, it's different, you know, it's, but it's not, uh, you know, it's not an illness per se. I hate that. Well, and it's interesting because I just had a conversation with a client um, the other day and we really dug into acceptance and accepting the ADHD and, and to not compare yourself to other people. Like you've got to stop comparing yourself to others and only focus on what is going to work for you, what's going to work for your family and not worry about what you think everybody else is doing or how they should do it or how you should do it. But it really is accepting that, you know, I'm going to need these things, but I'm really yeah. great at these things. And, um, and, and I, you know, that takes a while. I mean, somebody that's newly diagnosed isn't going to get there, you know, immediately. Um, but I think that, the message is that there is hope that you will get there, that the, it will be something you can accept. And like you said, you don't have to fit into somebody else's normal. What is right. that? I mean, it's it, it. you've mentioned this several times in the last few weeks. It's like yeah. that doesn't exist for any of us. Normal. Right. What's normal? We should just ban that word. Exactly. <laughs> Navigate and ban oh. normal. Yes. That's it. Yes. So, Michael, I have a question before we actually go into details. How did Chad and Ada come together to make this conference happen? The answer to that question is that we both had, uh, you know, independent conferences for about 25 years now. Um, and I, I guess that's a question for the higher ups. Um, I'm not, you know, um, really familiar with how that it, that uh, bond was sealed, but I can tell you that we're both, both organizations uh, are yeah. really thrilled to be working together because we get to, to bring the best of both worlds uh, to this year's conference in November. Well, and it's coming right up, no November 9th through 12th in uh, Atlanta, Georgia, hot Atlanta. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and uh, so you've got l lots of details here, uh, uh, Michael, but I wonder if you could just uh, give us a little bit of a, an overview. What do people, uh, what can people expect to find, learn, see, experience uh, at the at the conference? So um, this is the International Conference for ADHD um, this year in Atlanta, Georgia. And we're going to have hundreds of professionals on site. Some are speaking, uh, others just attending for their own, um, you know, professional development. But we're I'll gonna be there. Be, you'll be there. We're going to be, <laughs> I'll be there. there as well. Um, <laughs> thousands and, uh, you know, about 3,000 individuals or families, uh, you know, that, that are either living with ADHD or supporting someone or loving someone that, that has ADHD are going to be at this conference. So uh, if you're newly diagnosed or even if you were diagnosed years ago, uh, this is the place to go to get the latest in research, in, you know, management strategies, in, in how to make the most out of this, uh, you know, as an individual, but also, you know, as a family. And you'll get to meet some really, really exciting people. We that I think is a it answers a question that I get all the time about these conferences when we talk about conferences the ADHD conferences that it's for uh, it's for practitioners therapists coaches and and not of course it's not for you know families and parents and those who are living with ADHD themselves but you're saying this is this is going to be a great and rich conference for everybody oh absolutely yeah yes, everybody yes. Um, you know certainly there's going to be there's going to be more individuals and families there uh, for the for the general conference. Uh, but if you have questions about what's happening or, you know, if you want to come for the whole conference or just for a day, 
um, check us out online. Uh, they have, you know, all the information's on there. You can take a look at and uh, prepare for sessions. It's, it's very exciting. <laughs> It really is. And it's fun because I remember the very first conference I went to a few years ago, I was sitting at a table and, and uh, I was talking to the gal next to me and, and she was a mom, you know, just she was a mom. She was attending the conference. She wanted to get as much information as she could um, on parenting her her um, child that had ADHD. And we had this great conversation. And then, you know, next session, I'm sitting next to, you know, or across or next, like I remember seeing um Rick Green <laughs> from uh, uh, AD, ADD and loving it or ADHD and loving it. And um, I was starstruck. I'm like, oh, my God, there's Rick Green. <laughs> I mean, you know, you see, it's just really, it's a really fun experience. And we certainly, uh, we have some big names this year. Uh, Rick Green will be there. Sari Solden uh, is always uh, a sold out showing. Uh, she'll be yeah. there as well. Um, we have Russell Barkley attending this year. Big name in ADHD. Wow. Yeah. So lots of rich content that's going to be there. But I can't emphasize enough that, you know, especially for uh, for the folks that, you know, uh, follow ADA or members of ADA, uh, this is the only time, uh, you know, this year that you're going to have an opportunity to meet with the person you've been talking to over the computer or virtually. And, though you know, those moments where, you know, you, you meet the person you've been talking to or that's been incremental in in your growth this year, it's, it's really moving. Well, and I, I should add, too, that, you know, if you've been listening to this show regularly for the last couple of months, the guests that we've had on the show, uh, you know, almost to a, to a person have said, oh, I'll see you there. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. if you want to, if you, if you found the folks that we've been talking to interesting, uh, go meet them. They're, right. they're all going to be there in Atlanta, uh, November 9th through 12th. Anything uh, anything else we need to know about uh, details? I'm going to put uh, the links to uh, registration for the conference in the show notes. Uh, any Anything else specifically you'd like to share for our audience, Michael? Well, certainly, um, you know, check us out online. If you can't, you know, um, if you can't make the whole conference come for a day, uh, I look forward to, to meeting you and connecting. Um, and, you know, this is this is the only time this year we'll be getting together. I'm not sure where the uh, 2018 conference will be. Uh, but certainly, um, you know, join us in, in the spirit of ADHD awareness. Um, come share some news, share your story uh, with us on uh, ADD.org. Outstanding. Great. Thank you so much, Michael. Thank you so much for having me. This is a great conversation, everybody. Definitely check that out. Swipe over in your mobile device for all the show notes and links to learn more about the conference and register yourself. Uh, I, I personally am not going to be there. Nikki will be representing. And I don't know, maybe we'll find a way to do some podcasting from the... Uh, from the conference, I'll wear from a the floor, that has Pete on it. <laughs> Pete will be with me in there spirit. You <laughs> there you go. Uh, thank you, everybody, on behalf of Michael Simino and the wonderful organizations he's representing here today, uh, and Nikki Kinzer. I'm Pete Wright, and we'll catch you next week right here on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. <laughs>